Sergeant, and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 14. So let's get right to it. First email is going to be from Cindy Holland, and she starts off with, Good morning, Mark. Sorry it's taken so long to get back to you. I'm a busy mom these days. I hope you're well. Like I mentioned on the call, I am a prior Air Force Civil Service contractor for NASA, Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, the Bureau of Reclamation, etc. Most of my career, I worked on jet programs on a flight line. Very exciting stuff. The SR-71, the F-117, the F-35. I worked briefly with a contractor called Bastane Technologies in Southern California on a program that was supposed to be building the engine for the next space shuttle program. That particular job was very short-lived as they canceled the program in 2009. I attached my resume for reference so you can get an idea of some of the programs I've been on. I am a Christian. I am a truther who woke up to all conspiracies in 2009. I am new to Flat Earth. It's been about six months or so. I'm completely convinced Flat Earth is truth, although I don't know that we will ever have an actual photo of our flat plane. The only odd things I can remember during my career were... When I was with NASA in the 1990s, my office was next to the photo lab. Two of the guys who worked in the photo lab were walking in front of me to leave our building. They were laughing and saying how dumb people were to believe in the moon landing. I'm not sure if they knew I could hear them if they wanted me to hear them, but they were being, told, being bold about it. I thought they were crazy and blew it off. That would have been around 1998. The other odd thing was when I worked on the F-117 program for Lockheed Martin. One of our top engineers told me the Earth was flat and gave me a brief explanation. I honestly thought it was, a, it was strange that such a smart man was so confused. That was in 2006. Uh, if you're interested in more info or just want to chat, uh, please feel free to call, blah, blah, blah. I'm currently not working. I was laid off in 2012. I'm a single mom living, living in Phoenix, Arizona, so I'm busy with the kids, but I have time for the Flat Earth stuff. I'll be sending a second email with some pics from my career. God bless you and your family. Thank you very much for your time, Cindy. Awesome, Cindy. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, is greatly appreciated. Um, next one is from... Uh, just calls himself M. Found a military manual claiming the Coriolis adjustment. Oh yeah, this was right. This was like a 700-page document. Thought uh, you might want to see this. I wonder what the U.S. missile commander would think. I honestly never thought I would see the U.S. manual claiming a Coriolis adjustment. Of course, there's nothing in there that actually gives the details on it. Uh, but it's at the, mili the Marines military portal. And uh, if anyone wants the listening to the publications, I'm not going to read the whole thing off here, but it's a huge document, and I went through it, and there's nothing in there remotely interesting regarding the Coriolis effect that counteracts any of the military guys I was talking to. Uh, Christian writes... Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. That was um, uh, Cindy's email where she was going over the uh, her pictures. So she validated herself with a lot of pictures in front of strike fighters and the SR-71 and the F-117. Daniel writes... Hello, Mark. Uh, you have no idea how badly I've wanted to speak with you regarding Flat Earth. Part of the reason infants and toddler-aged children need to sleep so much is that their brain needs a chance to recuperate from the stresses of learning and stimulation throughout the day. So much of what they take in is new to them and the brain needs to be in sleep mode in order to properly process the data dump. After I broke into your Flat Earth clues and devouring it, I had a type of mental snap, which forced me to take it easy for a few days and get extra sleep. It was as if I had to look at the world from the perspective of a young child again, and started with the premise that I knew almost nothing about anything. All this change in conjunction with the latest revelations which came out as part of the whole recent election circus transported me into an entirely different mental paradigm, which was new, unusual, and increasingly uncomfortable. 
Since I'm feeling somewhat insecure and don't really know what to believe anymore, I decided to assume certain things as truths, at least temporarily, and then go from there. I now operate under the assumption that all of the wars we have been engaged in for the last couple of hundred years on Earth have been all part of a huge stage show put on by the power elite in order to serve their own needs. Since we now know that NASA is completely fake and has been fake all along, we also know that the Russians, Chinese, Japanese, and many other countries are also in on the scam. This means there has been uh, a type of long-term deep international cooperation behind the scenes while average citizens around the world are led to believe that these countries are deeply divided and incessantly on the brink of war. This also adds a small amount of elucidation onto all of Admiral Byrd's mysterious missions to the Antarctic. Back to the shape of our terrarium, thanks to you, until recently I have always believed we live on a globe. Though I had this belief, I did wonder why the Earth didn't seem spherical at all and thought it should appear much more rounded. I asked about this and it was explained to me that since we were so physically small as visual observers in comparison to the massive size of the Earth, that it seemed flat from our perspectives even though it's actually round. From a certain logical perspective, if you were something as small as a quark on the back of an elephant, the elephant would seem flat. I tried hard to try to come up with an example which might help me put our planet into a more proper perspective in terms of total size. This is what I came up with. Let's say the Earth is perfectly spherical, with the exceptions of a series of mountain ridges that run perpendicular to the poles and are spaced 100 miles apart from each other. If the Earth has a circumference of 25,000 miles, there would be 249 such ridges around the Earth, circumnavigating the globe. If a human observer shined a spotlight to the mountain ridge 100 miles south to another observer, then that observer could shine a spotlight upon the mountain ridge 100 miles south of its position and so on. It's, if each observer turned on their spotlight at the instant they observed a the spotlight, how long would it take for the observer standing on the mountain ridge at the North Pole uh, to have a light shine back on them? Considering it took each observer one second to switch on their spotlight, it would take 249 seconds or four minutes and nine seconds. This is not a very long time to circumnavigate the whole globe if it is actually as round as they say it is and only has a diameter of about 8,000 miles. The curvature would surely be evident in nearly every direction you looked. By opening my eyes, as well as the eyes of so many others, you have really done an amazing thing, Mark. You really deserve a lot of credit for the arguments you bring up. For your own sake, I might caution you to be somewhat reserved as to where all of this goes from here. I gather from listening to you speak in your various videos that you believe there will be a type of tipping point with Flat Earth, at which point there will be a giant uh, egg that cracks open where everyone sees the light. I really hope it's so, Mark, but then I'm reminded about what happened with 9-11. I believe the same thing would happen once all revelations of what actually transpired on 9-11 came out. I was sure we would all be set on a new and nobler path after a thorough house cleaning. In the end, it was all ignored. Today, almost every sane person knows the U.S. government was up to serious shenanigans on 9-11, but at the end of the day, nothing changed. Almost every person who was involved with the operation remained within the cabal, and most of them ended up with more money and more power. People who should have been in prison were only higher on the hog. Have you considered the consequences as if everyone catches on but nothing changes? What follows is my rationale as it pertains to the Pythagorean theorem. I haven't been able to poke any holes in it, but haven't been challenged on it at all. Will you look at it and let me know what you think? Thanks, Daniel. And he gives me some stuff in the Pythagorean theorem and I'll respond to him separately on that. So thank you, thank you, Daniel, very much. Uh, interesting stuff all, all the way around. David writes, uh, meet the people who believe the earth is flat sent by David Collins. Uh, let's see here. What really, what really happened dot com. Uh, Hi, Mark. What really happened is not ready for fl a flat earth yet. Oh, what really happened .com. And he sent me the article real quick. It says, uh, when Malachi Henderson was skydiving a few weeks ago, he noticed that the earth looked flat, even from the plane. He mentioned it to the pilot. The higher you get, the flatter it looks, the pilot replied. Henderson wasn't surprised. 
The pilot's response was evidence of something he'd been researching for years. Henderson is one of a growing movement of Americans who believe that the Earth is flat. They refer to themselves as flat earthers. Flat earthers have a wide range of convictions. Some come to the movement from a religious place, others from a scientific one, but most believe in one simple principle, that NASA and everyone involved in space exploration are liars and that there is a massive conspiracy to hide the fact that the Earth is flat. This is yet another poison the well hoax planted on the internet by the government so that the corporate media can denounce all independent media as kooks and nuts. This is the same, this is in the same category as such planted hoaxes as the fake Apollo moon landings, chemtrails, harp, no planes at the Pentagon, etc. And that's at whatreallyhappened.com. You guys can look that article up if you get a chance. I wasn't going to do a separate thing on it, so I just kind of included it here with the email that was sent to me. Uh, this email's from Jeff, Jeff, Jeff. Oh yeah. He put on the back of his Sierra, his GMC Sierra truck above the word Sierra. He put a silver lettering called flat. It's very well done. And then above the GMC, he put earth and he says flat for life. Just in case you didn't catch that. Thank you for all you do. I haven't gotten plates, but thought this was worth adding to your plate collection. Check out the left and right side of my tailgate. Maybe GMC will sponsor our movement for truth. No, I didn't think so either. Anyhow, thank you for your time. And uh, yes, Jeff, it's G-E-O-F-F-S-A-L-G-A-D-O. -F -F uh, get a chance. I would love to include those, but the, the one you sent, the, the lettering's too small. It's going to be tough for me to zoom in. So take separate pictures of the Sierra part and the GMC part. Zoom in on those. And I will definitely include them in the license plate section. I think it's very, very cool that you did that. A nice custom job. So thank you. Thank you very much for that. Uh, let's see here. Joel, I think, if I can actually click on it. Joel, hi, Mark. I was following your Under the Dome movie. I would like to put it in French. Actually, I'm working on the subtitles now. Now. And in the opening section, you mentioned that you understand the decisions done for JFK, Pearl Harbor, 9-11. I didn't get that correctly. Are you convinced that it was for the greater good that those events happened? What did you mean by that? Well, anyhow, I like your work, and I'll be translating it in French. Uh, I will then, if time permits, do a voiceover in French, if that's okay with you. God bless, Joel. Uh, and it's two dots above the E, so hopefully I'm pronouncing it right. It's hard to say sometimes. Uh, yeah, and that thing that I did in the, the Flat Earth Clues introduction... What I meant by that was I absolutely understood. I know enough about conspiracies. And I've known about them for some time that I really thought that JFK, Pearl Harbor, 9-11, they were inevitable. Uh, J I, I won't get into this too much, but JFK was going to go down. He had he literally had no allies to, to go against him. He was Caesar in this case. Pearl Harbor, if Pearl Harbor isn't destroyed, then America doesn't get into war into World War II. And if that doesn't happen, the Germans win the world, basically. And 9-11, eh, not as inevitable, but I, I got it. I Basically, I understood. I'm not saying the greater good. I'm not saying agree with it. I understand it. There's a big difference there. Whereas, look, if you don't stage some sort of fake attack into the United States by the Middle East, you can't give the population revenge justification to go into the Middle East. You, you've got to, you know, we, we fight for revenge. And so, look, if you want the Middle East, you, you've you got to come up with a convincing argument. If you can't do that, you've got to come up with some sort of act that makes it seem like we have enemies in the Middle East, which we don't. I'm sorry for those people that think we do. We just don't. We we have the United States doesn't. Yeah, there's not a lot of people that love us, but you know, hate us to the point where we, we should be being attacked constantly. We're not. It's like, oh no, we're perfect. It doesn't. Matter. I'm not going to get in that argument right now. But thank you, thank you. And by the way, thank you for translating this into French. That's awesome. Uh, Thomas writes, "Hello, Mark Sargent. In the last six weeks or so, I became a flat earther, and I blame you for that. Thanks a lot. You are doing a great job. Keep it up." Tom Wright from Kingwood, Texas. Uh, I'm, yeah, I know what you mean, Thomas. You probably lost a whole bunch of sleep, and you're, now you're dying to tell people. And every person that you tell looks like it, you, like, like you just took your your skin off, and there's a lizard face underneath it. So, uh, you're welcome. No, seriously, Tom, keep up the good work. Sean writes, "Hey, Mark, what if the moon is two sided? One has the white color, and the other is the blood color." projection system just turns it thoughts sean hartwell i would think that actually it's that's a that's actually not a terrible 
terrible idea. But it it's it's a little limited. You got to remember, anyone that has the technology to build a structure this large. I mean, it's large to us, but it may be smaller to the people that built it, or the being that built it. Then, as far as the projection system goes in the moon, it's not that hard. Remember, we can do blood moons inside a planetarium, and we can also do all phases, you know, waxing and waning and all that fun stuff. We can we can do that inside a planetarium, and that's just a visual projection system. So it doesn't have to be a physical thing. Uh, it's a nice it's a nice idea, but it, it you know it doesn't have to be that simple. You know, they've got the budget. The people that that built this place. They have the, the resources to come up with something a little more complex. But thanks, John. Uh, this one's from, who wrote this? Libor. L-I-B-O-R, last name, C-E-J-K-A. Hi, Mark. I just finished your YouTube. They are hiding God. I can imagine that you receive more emails that you could ever read, or at least more that you can answer. But just in case you do read this one, I want to share something with you. I've been a professional pilot since 1986. I have flown supersonic jets, helicopters, and everything in between. And I have nothing to disprove the claims that you make in your film. On the contrary, I can only support them due to my other passion, the healing arts. Because of that, I am also a certified hypnotherapist. I know, rather an unusual combination. In hypnosis, I routinely... Uh, through my clients, talk to the creative source and associated entities. We even had an encounter with an entity known as Jesus of Nazareth the other day. Anyhow, one of the questions I asked the cosmic consciousness was, is Earth flat or round? The answer was, without hesitation, flat, followed by an explanation that nicely fits your claims. Considering that the cosmic consciousness knows everything about everything and so far was right about everything else, I consider the flat earth debate settled. Keep up the good work, my fellow light worker. Sincerely, Libor uh, C E J K A. I do not know how to pronounce that. Uh, this one's from Joe. First off, Mark, hats off to you. I consider you the premier ambassador to the flat earth movement. Oh, that's awfully nice. However, the purpose of this email is not to express my gratitude for all that you have done to awaken so many people. It is to try to further motivate you to reach deeper and find an avenue to awaken the masses. You do so much from your clues to strange world, mailbags, and endless interviews and podcasts. Your availability to all is commendable, but there has to be more. Flat Earth is an issue, a fact that is so obvious to everyone or anyone that spends the time and effort to research for themselves. The frickin' curvature of the supposed planet cannot be measured. So why is this fact so hard to present to the masses? Yes, of course, we have an unbelievable amount of globe earth conditioning to deal with. I get that. I, of course, was one of them. I bought it all, aliens included, spent a now embarrassing amount of my life researching them. But back to the point, how do we take the next step? I have many ideas on how to move forward. The first one I would like to discuss is finding individuals with influence and finances that can make a real difference. It will only take one billionaire or one high-profile actor, sports star, musician to light the fuse of mass awakening. I have a plan that with limited finances can proactively seek an individual that is either already a flat earther or is willing to research with an open mind so that an individual can be located that is willing to finance a South Pole Antarctic expedition and a professional documentary focusing on the curvature of lack thereof and expert testimonies such as you have done and market to the net market it to Netflix. Hey, he's done this all without actual putting in a paragraph break, by the way. You are on the front lines, Mark. It's time you get the proper weapons to win this war. And yes, make no mistake, this is a war. A war for our way of life, our rightful consciousness, and our freedom. While I have only scratched the surface of my ideas and things, questions that I would like to say or ask. I see I have already produced a lengthy email and will close by saying a welcome and opportunity to communicate with you directly if you see the value of another dedicated flat earther ready to help the movement so that we can see the day where we are no longer the minority. And um, yeah, it, again, great idea. Not the first time I've, I've heard, you know, an Antarctic expedition, but the Antarctic is the, the last place you're going to be able to get into because it's the one place that they have spent next to NASA, the most money. In fact, maybe they have spent more money down there to seal this sucker off. Look, the treaty is unbreakable. You're not going to be able to roam around. And plus, I've got a funny feeling that from the coastline to the edge of the flat, you know, this this 
enclosed structure is several thousand miles. So unless you've got a plane with a very, very large fuel supply, I don't know, you know, even, even if you get out to the edge, what are you going to do exactly? What are you going to take? You're going to try to take a picture of, of it and come back to the world? Uh, I, I wouldn't necessarily focus on the South Pole right now. It is an extremely hostile environment and it is well guarded, well fortified. Uh, nice idea, but I think it'd be resources that would be squandered, for lack of a better term. But thank you, though. Uh, let's see. Lewis writes. No, nope, he sent me some photos. I'm not going to look at that right now. Bob Hennessy writes. Uh, Mark, I caught this on a report about some Japanese project. It provides actual numbers of the man-made objects. Yeah, the uh, the space junk. If anyone wants to check it out, look at check out the articles that have been written recently about the uh, Japanese space program, otherwise known as JAXA, that has been trying to. They're they're saying they're going to launch a probe that's going to clear out some of the space junk that's up there. Don't believe it for a second. It is, is ridiculous. It's just another globe reinforcement tool. Any story that, that talks about the, um, uh, the space junk is, is ridiculous. Uh, let's see here. What other emails do we have? This one's from MJ. Hi, Mark. Fan of your channel. Did you have a chance to look at the following? Could this be evidence of our flat world? Kind regards, Mark with a C. Uh, because, let's see here, the BBC Five Live interview mini documentary with British radar veteran Eileen Young Husband who tracked Churchill's plane all the way from America via radar, uh, that's pre-satellite, that's over 3,000 miles. How is that possible on a globe with no satellites? Uh, so yeah, it's an interesting article and very, very, very interesting from 3,000 miles back in the day when Churchill is around. How, how are you pulling that off if the earth has a curvature on it? How are, how are you getting all that info? I don't think you can. So an interesting article. People, check it out. Moving on. Amber Lee. Amber Lee. A-M-B-E-R-L-E-E. -E -E. Hi, Mark. So I'm, I've been listening to some interviews about flat earth theory. It's blowing my mind, but I totally dig it. I'm wondering, though and I'm no mathematician, but I think, and I don't know how yet, but it feels connected somehow that this whole idea really plays into string theory. What do you think? Sincerely, Amber Lee. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, I don't want to delve into it too much here because it's an email show, but the, you, you want to talk to it, talk about flat earth in relation to uh, virtual reality, the matrix, the 13th floor, dark city, that sort of stuff. Yeah, because when it comes down to it, when you really break down what we are down into the molecules, we are still pure energy. So what made that energy and is that energy part of a, a simulated system? I, it's very, very possible. And does string theory tie into that the people that have been trying to de trying to decipher the code of what we are physically at the at the submolecular level yeah yeah very possible that's connected i you know that though is i think digging a little, becoming a little too granular uh i try to look at the, at the bigger pictures you know it's but it's an interesting it's interesting thought uh mary writes hi this is mary from mary f sorry from pittsburgh I listened to your interview on Beyond Reality last night, and I just had to comment on it. You truly are our Flat Earth Ambassador. Great job. I would not be surprised if you managed to convert some ball earthers after that show. I am like so many others and been investigating Flat Earth for about a year and a half now and have to admit that it is my guilty pleasure. Thank goodness I am retired and have the time. My sincerest thanks to you and all the others who are searching for the flat earth truth. And by the way, how lucky for John Glenn to live such a long life after going through that nasty Van Allen belt. And may the flat be with you, Mary F. Uh, nice that she mentioned that with the Star Wars premiere coming out this weekend. Not that they should be making more Star Wars movies, but whatever. Money is money. Uh, and yeah, John Glenn just died less than a week ago. One of the supposed Apollo astronauts, along with Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin and those guys. A very high profile astronaut who lived to be 95 years old and interesting that he lived to be 95 years old the, the Van Allen argument I still think is uh, very relevant which is that 
they, they never discussed the Van Allen shielding. And that is Van Allen announces this deadly, deadly, super deadly radiation belt in 1959 and then kind of backpedals. Once the space program is is in play, he's like, well, how are you going to get past that? You know, it's all we're just going to go really, really fast. That literally that was his answer. If you go fast enough, you can go through it without getting much radiation to you. It's like, really? Because the fastest stuff back then was what, 16,000, 17,000 miles an hour? And if you're saying the Van Allen belts can range anywhere between three and 60,000 miles thick, you're talking about several hours, several hours each way in these belts with no shielding. And by that, I mean, there's no shielding. No one's ever, NASA's never, ever talked about the shielding. No shielding is in play because there's only two things, at least down here, that we know that can block radiation. One is lead and the other is gold. Both are very heavy. <clears throat> very dense. That's the whole point. You know, dense metal protects you know, from radioactive um, uh, particles. So what did they use? They didn't use anything. So and, and no astronaut died. Nobody got radiation poisoning. Nobody even got cancer. Those those astronauts lived long lives. Uh, the, fine. You want to look up some articles that say 50 years after the fact that, oh, yeah, they may have, may have been subjected to cosmic rays. What are you talking about? They all lived long lives. John Glenn, 95 years old, uh, and he went through the Van, Van, Van Allen belts, if you believe their story. He didn't go through anything. John Glenn is no hero. He, you know, but yeah. And he got, became a U.S. senator after that. Ugh. Sorry, I go on and on, but the Apollo astronauts were nothing but liars. Oh, let's see who this one is from. This one is from Bill. Bill says, Mark, here is a 13 minute video using a computer reader of a statement from an alleged military contract engineer. The premise is he designed a guided missile, but was told to move the antenna array of the GPS to the nose cone instead of the tail, because there are no satellites and the object needed to get its signals from cell towers. He tells his tail and says there is now a hit on him and he is moving from place to place looking for an opportunity to get out of the country. He says he has tried WikiLeaks, but they will not touch this information. Uh, now that you've listened to the entire thing, I ask, are you buying any of this or is this channel just trolling? Hey, if you guys want to watch the video, the video is called... Uh, what's it called? It's called Message from a Whistleblower Engineer to Flat Earthers and Truth Seekers. It was published December 7th, 2016, and the channel is called C3, which stands for Communications Command and Control. I don't know. <clears throat> I think it's a little bit of a stretch, to be honest. They could be baiting the, the Flat Earth community. You never know. It might be real, but I, I'm, not, I'm not totally on board yet. Uh, let's see. This one's from... Premier Pilot Truck. Interesting name. Wow, I believe, but I have questions. Why hide that the earth is flat and why hide God? What is the purpose? What is the goal of humans in your opinion? Well, those are all different questions, but uh, let's answer the first thing first, which is why hide that the earth is flat for control. The biggest thing is that science is the current running yeah running religion of this world yeah you could say that yeah the, the five major religions and by that i mean buddhism hinduism judaism islam and christianity they can not say the control but they influence 80 percent of the population but most of the industrialized world re relies on science and science related inventions everything from the envi um, the microwave oven to air conditioning to smartphones we all kneel at some point or another to scientific uh, breakthroughs and those breakthroughs rely on science being full of integrity and that gets all those things get put into question if science is wrong about something like this it's so huge that science would be undermined and uh, you know if, if science was wrong about this what else were they wrong about you know, were, were they wrong about evolution were they wrong about carbon dating how about the big bang and all those things to get tied to religion in some way or form. And so religion gets strengthened and the power structure changes and there's a big paradigm shift. That's the last thing anyone would want. And, and again, listen to one of the clues that I, that I did where I talked about how, I think it was status quo, where uh, all these, you know, there's a, be a huge shift academic wise, you know, astronomy and astrophysics would be gone overnight. 
uh, your, your remaining, uh, remaining physical sciences, geology, hydrology, archaeology, biology, anything with an ology next to it would have to be re rewritten from the ground up. No play on words there. And <clears throat> the financial markets would be shaken to their core. And spiritually, that's, that's the biggest one. People would act differently. And all these things would affect the power structure and the infrastructure that the authority has created over the last X number of hundreds of years. They aren't good. You know, if it's going to turn ugly, you know, if there's something at risk, they are going to hold on to the status quo as long as they can. That's the biggest. As far as what is the goal of humans, in your opinion? Oh, I think this is all a test. I think this is a school, a big education system. We are here to gain perspective and to understand our place in the universe. I think that's the short version anyway. So thank you, whoever Premier Pilot Truck is. Uh, moving on. This one's from Chris. Hi, my name is Chris McCurry, and I'm fairly new to this flat earth theory. I'm starting to believe it very well could be true, but there are still some unanswered questions. Questions I've asked on the flatearthsociety.com. Oh, yeah, because that's where you want to go. And various YouTube video comments. I was hoping you could find it possible to answer them. So my first question is this. As the sun is appearing to rise in our sky, there are a few clouds in the sky in front of it. Those clouds take in the light of our sun, as with anything else, as they reflect the light or whatever it does. The point being, I was just watching this happen, and the sun is coming to me to start the day, the light from the sun reflected underneath the clouds, the shadow on top of the clouds. Now, I've heard the sun is higher than the clouds, which would make sense. I've been on planes multiple times, and I've never really heard of anyone hitting the sun with a rocket or a plane or any sort of flying machine. So if the sun is above all the clouds and too high in the atmosphere so nobody can reach it, then how come the shadows are on top of the clouds when, it, logically speaking, they should be underneath? I'm not tra really trying to disprove the flat earth, just questions that pop into my head. Maybe it's due to perspective. The cloud shadow appear to be on top. I'm not sure just how perspective shows the sun rising. Hopefully I've explained this so it's understandable and I hope to see what, to see what you think. Uh, you know, I'm going to defer this one because without visual aids, uh, three channels you want to look at when it comes to perspective and the clouds and the sky. One is deep inside the rabbit hole, which is known as D-I-T-R-H. Uh, the second one is zeteticism.com, which is run by Jeffrey Grupp. And the third one is My Perspective, which is run uh, by Rory Cooper. So check out those three uh, YouTube channels, a lot of videos on there, and m multiple sun and lighting videos that should help you out. Check those out. This one's from... <clears throat> this is another one from Mr. M? I think it is. Uh, let's see. S Dear Mark, search for two words. Oh, right, in that, that massive document. Uh, rotation and Coriolis. It's telling that this manual references because of the rotation Earth more than anything else. Nowhere does it speak of the complex math. Yeah, yeah. The um, that article from the military website from Marines.mil portals slash fifty nine slash publications slash mcwp three underscore sixteen underscore four PDF file and. It's uh, an interesting document because he, what he says here is because um, out of the 800 odd pages, there's only 13 rotation note. The first page is even reference standard deployment required, required a non-rotating earth. But that's under experimental conditions. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. 800 page document. It doesn't even go into the math. It, like, it goes along with everything else that I've talked about <clears throat> with the subject matter experts which is that everyone knows about the rotation, the Coriolis effect and the curvature of the earth, but nobody uses it in their nine to five job. It's just this notation. It's like, oh yeah, yeah, and there's a rotation of the earth. Oh, you're not gonna use it today or ever, but it's, it's out there. No different than the pilots that are flying uh, when they see a perfectly flat horizon. And they think, well, the world looks flat, but it can't be flat because they're, we're taught as children that it's a globe. So interesting, interesting. Uh, but yeah, look up that uh, that that marines.mil portals thing. You get a chance. It's very, very interesting. Uh, let's see. This one's done by uh, Happy Flat Christmas. Oh, yeah. I, I, I was going to save that. It's a Christmas cookie with its flat on it. So thank you. Thank you for sending me a Christmas cookie with its flat written. It's one of those um, Christmas tree Christmas cookies. Christmas cookies. Lonnie writes, Mark, thank you for your curiosity and drive in developing this film. 
everybody keeps calling it a film. It was just one of those things I woke up and did. I never really, not really a filmmaker, but that's okay. If you guys think I'm a filmmaker, fantastic. I, apparently, I'm in IMDb as a filmmaker now. I wonder what are your thoughts on Harp and the chemtrails phenomena? What do you think they are up to? Thanks in advance, Lonnie. Uh, chemtrails and Harp. Well, I think that Harp was actually initially designed as a frequency uh, experiment to try to breach the dome or affect it in somehow, some way, affect the firmament. And eventually it got morphed into a weather changing device. And now the Americans can use it to create local weather phenomena. As far as chemtrails, do I think they're real? Yeah, I do think they're real. I've, but there's so many theories on what exactly they are that I, I don't even know which one. I, I don't even lean towards anyone in particular because people aren't dying in droves and fields and people aren't turning into mutants or zombies after a plane passes over. Or they, could it be a slow-acting poison? Could it be a genetic development? Could it be a visual display enhancer? Could, I don't... Your guess is as good as mine in this case. Nobody has come up with any sort of decent uh, or, or uh, a consensus on what it could be. So don't know. Do not know. I, I do have an opinion on HARP, but that's, you know, HARP is an interesting thing. I think, you know, HARP could be responsible for stuff like Katrina. You know, look at fun stuff. Look at the look at the path of that hurricane when you, when you get a chance. Uh, this one's from Hans. Hans? Hans. Hi, Mark. A uh, thought just crossed my mind. Where do rockets go when they are not going into space? And are they replaced while re-entering Earth, supposedly? Is it possible those rockets are landing where no one will see them like over the border of the Antarctic? Is there a way to track this? Knowing the height of the ceiling or dome, whatever, these rockets could follow that trajectory until they are out of everyone's sight and just dump them over the border where there's lots of space where no one will check. Your thoughts, please. Hans. Hans. Uh, not your fault because it's it's some obscure information that's out there, but there is a rocket booster dumping ground that the Americans use. It's the I think believe it's the South Pacific. It's one of the most remote places away from any population where you know because remember all rockets have to drop their boosters off supposedly, and the best place to dump them is in the ocean, a very deep place in the ocean where no one's going to look and, and you're not going to have people, sightseers and looky-loos that are going to take their boats out there and check it out. So already, we already know for a fact that they're dumping boosters out there. I think they're dumping pretty much everything out there. As far as what's coming back, um, when it was the shuttles, uh, you could just, you know, drop a shuttle in the air somewhere and, and have it land wherever or have it take off from somewhere else. Or remember, it used to be piggybacked in the back of 747s who, and, and they landed just fine. So you could just take another 747 and launch it from there and, and pretend that it's coming in from space. As far as the capsules are concerned, those are super, super small by comparison. So all the capsules, I believe, were initially, going back into the 60s, dropped off by, what, a C-130s? Just put them in the back of those big cargo planes and drop them off with parachutes and let them land on the water. Unless you really want, you know, if, unless you really want to cheat. So you just put them in the water, literally just put them in the water. But I don't think you want to get that many military men involved. You just use the plane if you get a chance. So, yeah, the, I have no doubt. No, I don't think the rockets are being dumped in the Antarctic. I think they're dump, being dumped in the Pacific Ocean. The Pacific Ocean is a very, very big expanse of water. So there you go. Let's get rid of that one. This next one is from Kyle. Kyle? Yeah, Kyle from San Antonio. Hello, Mark. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Sergeant. You don't have to be formal. Call me Mark. I've been listening to your Truth Frequency Radio podcast since the first installment, and I have watched all of your Flat Earth Clues uh, videos on YouTube. I believe in the Flat Earth now, even though again, it goes against everything that I was ever taught. Well, you and me both. I have an honest opinion for you as opposed to a gotcha question where someone thinks that they can trap you in a lie or an error. I think that this question may prove in the positive for Flat Earth, but I can't be certain. My father was born to a mother who was a school teacher in the American Panama Canal Zone. She taught there for many years. He spent his middle and high school years in Panama and only returned to the States when he went to college. Because my dad's mother was still there when I was born, teaching in Panama, I remember my parents taking me to that country for a visit when I was a very young boy. I remember them showing me the giant ship locks in the canal, the divided in and out chambers, or more precisely, west to east and vice versa, that serve the shipping lanes. 
but the lanes on one side, and I say side because I could have been oriented in uh, any compass direction, are very much higher than those on the other. I don't recall whether the Atlantic Ocean or the Pacific Ocean is said to be higher than the other, but the canal locks are told to have been built to rectify the discrepancy between the water level on the western side versus the eastern. I guess this doesn't make sense either on the globe Earth model nor on the flat model. I just have always wondered how it's possible when everyone agrees that the Earth's oceans are one continuous, contiguous body of water, no matter what our nomenclature divides them into four major oceans and many seas, that the water on one side, uh, a very narrow isthmus, can be several meters higher than that on the other side. Why was it necessary to build the massive hydromechanical locks in the Panama Canal? Should it have not been sufficient simply to dig a giant ditch across the isthmus to a single depth of sufficient depth that large cargo ships could pass? But I remember watching those canal locks work. Very slowly they worked, but water would be drained from one side and transferred to the opposite, and only then would the ramparts be lowered and the ships allowed to cross. There must be something to account for this obvious, even to the memory of a three to four year old difference in the ocean levels between the Atlantic and Pacific sides. I am not smart enough to figure it out or creative enough to speculate and make it sound credible. Can you help me, Mark? P.S. If you ignore this email entirely, no worries and no harm done. I simply uh, related a nearly forgotten childhood memory, and I probably won't remember having written this after a week or two. <laughs> so keep doing what you're doing. Keep it flat turn it viral and love the haters Kyle from San Antonio and yeah I'd heard this as well and it's true there is a three to four meter difference in sea level height between the west and the east side of Panama and that is very very interesting because shouldn't sea level be absolutely sea level and granted you think well three four meters that's not very high well it's not but that means that if you like just dug a ditch it would be continually continuously flowing from one side to the other very quickly as a matter of fact so how does that work uh, again some sort of molecular magnetism whatever's controlling the tides and whatever's kind of helping the underwater conveyor system there seems to be a what are, you know less than tenth of one percent difference in elevation and the water level between the west and the east side. I don't know why. I mean, there's such a huge volume of water in those oceans that maybe there is a swell on one side. I don't know. I don't think it has anything to do with the the flatness or the curvature of the Earth, but it is very very interesting. There's got to be. Uh, some sort of swell that's going on on one side versus the other. It's it's intriguing. I've I've actually thought about that myself. So thank you for writing in, and I don't know, maybe someone else will figure it out. I'll look into it. I don't know how much about time I'll be able to spend though. Uh, moving on. So how many of these can we get through? This one's from Tarek. Hello, I'm a fan of yours and believe that the earth is flat before watching your video. I knew it from our Islamic holy book, the Quran. And then when I watched your video, I found many similarities between what you said and the Quran. So if you're interested, I can tell you what stuff are written in our book. You don't have to. Lots of people from all religions have sent me their text and the Quran. I, I think I got in the first two weeks. And so, yes, of course, there are similarities between Judaism uh, Islam and Christianity, no, no question. And some of their, they share quite a few of the same stories and would not, you know, doesn't surprise me at all. Lorenz writes, uh, let's see. Hi, Mark. Do you know where I can get a gyroscope that will spin for six to 24 hours? I looked and I can't find one. I have other questions. If you are open to talk, thanks, Jeff. Uh, Jeff, no, I don't know actually where you can find a gyroscope that'll spin for 24 hours. There was a neat video that was put on YouTube recently though, where the guy basically hooked up an AC adapter to a gyroscope. Uh, and I, th I don't know how he did it exactly because it was initially, maybe it came with a, with an, look for a battery powered gyroscope with an AC adapter tied to it. So that you, because usually you, you spin the gyroscope up with a, uh, with, uh, with a battery powered you know, little motor and then you can let it go. But this guy apparently had an AC adapter, so you didn't have to use batteries. I don't know how he did it though. Uh, if I remember the video, I'll, I'll let you know, but it's, it's definitely out there. I just watched it just recently. Jim writes, hi, Mark, you don't know me. I was born in Minot, M-I-N-O-T, North Dakota. I've been in London for 20 years. I am 60 years old. We live in a giant bubble of atmosphere. Gravity is air pressure. Don't know really, but prove me wrong. All the best, Jim. 
Uh, yeah, we live in a giant bubble of atmosphere, but is, are you saying that's from a globe standpoint or a flat Earth standpoint? Because the bubble still applies, which brings up the question, if the power of vacuum is very, very strong, very, very strong, then why isn't the vacuum of deep space ripping our atmosphere clean off, leaving us with nothing? You know, I don't, I don't care if it's a bubble of a sphere or a bubble of a flat earth. The, va the power of the vacuum is extremely strong. And you say, well, it'd be like water tension. It's like, well, we punched holes through this. If you believe NASA out of this atmosphere, wouldn't you think the punching of the hole would then all of a sudden allow these gases to, to, to be flown off into space? Not exactly sure where you're going from, but if you're listening, you got to let me know first whether you're a flat earther or a globe earther or a globalist. Jacqueline writes. What does Jacqueline write? She writes. Hi, Mark. I am one of your avid subs on YouTube, and I have a couple of questions. I want to buy my son's night vision binoculars for Christmas, specifically for UFO watching at the cottage. I live in Ontario. You made a recommendation for binoculars on one of your shows, and I can't find that video now. What brand do you recommend? I recommend, and I've gone through a bunch of them currently, and I'm not exactly, I'm not, they don't, pay me to say this uh, the one i use is the because it doesn't break the bank is the gen generation one it's called night owl and it's the night owl pro gen i think it's 5x that's about the as much as you can magnification magnification you can get for a generation one night vision you can get gen 2 and gen 3 but they really it goes up exponentially in price almost uh, you can find if you can if you have the money to spend get a 10x if you can find it it still costs you about two thousand uh, dollars a 5x with a with a night um, with a night owl binoculars that'll run you all oh, 400 bucks which isn't too terrible but that's that's what I recommend you can find it on Amazon all day long and I'm pretty sure you can you can uh, get it sent to Canada second question for your email Q and A show the WikiLeaks revealed an email between John Podesta and Edgar Mitchell. Where Mitchell says, remember, our nonviolent ETI from the conti contiguous universe are helping us bring zero point energy to Earth. My question, do you think that the contiguous universe description is odd? Do you think it describes a flat Earth more than a globe? Yes, I do. Uh, how can a universe be contiguous when the definition means side by side touching or a border? I imagine that if it's space... Uh, is as they say it is mitchell would have used a more infinite description for space curious your thoughts yeah yeah i think anybody involved in mercury gemini and apollo i think they knew i think they were told not only that they had to fake uh, anything regarding the space program but they were also told why and so yeah and maybe he let that one slip of course neil armstrong was the big the big slip during one of his last uh, public appearances where he says that the the future space people have a lot uh, more they have to achieve if they can just remove one of truth's protective layers it was so cryptic to the people that were there but it makes so much sense now that uh, flat earth is a topic again and let's see here contiguous and she sent me the definition of t contiguous and uh, that's from Jacqueline Hilchuk, H-I-L-C-H-U-K. Thank you, thank you very much for sending that. Next one's from Andrea, or Andrea. Hi, Mark. Several times I've heard you mention Admiral Byrd's claims that Antarctica is rich in naturally occurring resources, minerals, fuel sources, and I want to know what proof Byrd presented to back up these claims. Is there anything more than his televised interview? Uh, what more than I think the question itself kind of answers it, doesn't it? What more do you want besides the world's uh, greatest explorer, in my opinion, modern explorer anyway, going on national television, primetime television in 1954, and saying in some detail that the Antarctica was, you know, full of resources and all these countries were down there and he was worried that they'd be fighting over these resources. What, what proof do you, what more proof do you want besides he, he being the spokesperson for all these groups down there? I don't, I don't know what more the papers describing the, the coal and the oil and stuff. In fact, those papers would be buried because you don't want after that, once you figure out what Antarctica is really about, you don't want to talk about resources anymore. You don't want to remind people that there's coal and oil and uranium and minerals. So no, I don't. In fact, you're the person, first person that's ever asked. It's like, hey, is there any more proof than, than Admiral Byrd actually doing a television saying on national television that all these things are happening? I, I don't know what more 
I can give you. Also, has anyone within your movement done any serious research into Andrea Barnes? Do you think she existed? Yeah, maybe. It's an interesting story, an intriguing story about the woman who supposedly made it to the edge of our, of our world. And, uh, and then something happened to her and she disappeared and her snowmobile was still left there. And this cryptic note where the film camera um, uh, footage should have been, yeah, maybe. But it, you know, she's a minor player, in my opinion, because there's just nothing, there's nothing much, much more to follow up on. Clint writes, how much more time do I got? I got a little more time, 10 minutes, maybe. Uh, Mark, I knew this was happening. There's a Facebook group called SASK, S-A-S-K, which is Saskatchewan is flat. And I posted my It's Flat license plate on there, thinking it might stir up some interest. And they are now admiring my plate for thinking that our province is flat. I posted that my plate has a dual meaning, but they never took the bait so far. Here is a screen capture of the thread. And the thread is, yeah, Saskatchewan is flat. Awesome. That's really, really great. And he posted his It's Flat license plate and, and people were going, oh, that's really cool. So yeah, great Facebook groups. You want to spread the word out there? you know set the set the bait set the traps and get people to to fall into it uh elaine mark i'd like a copy of your emergency preparedness if possible i'll share it with my son who found himself in a bit of a panic when they lost power a month ago i was clobbered in a major storm a year ago despite thinking i was prepared nine days without power was rough uh, yeah nine days is quite a it taught me a few things I didn't know. I'll share three small things. One, the battery radio was a sanity saver. I was home alone at the time and it kept me company, especially between sunset and bedtime. That's one of the things I write in my little PDF file, which I send to anybody free who asks for it. It's just a little two meg PDF file, about 100 pages long, about what to do if the power goes out to keep yourself from panicking. Uh, two, the solar yard lights were an unexpected bonus. I'll I'd bring them in at night and set them throughout the house like night lights. Families with young children should really find these helpful. Awesome. Three, I didn't want to cook in the chaos, so quick foods were the first go-tos for meal. Pe peanut butter sandwiches, granola bars, cold tomato basil soup from the can, it was a hot summer, worked for me. Quick, easy foods should be part of preparing, especially for the first days after a storm. Being off grid would be nice, but for the rest of us, it's easy enough to test your preparations. Just shut off the main power switch to your house for a week and see how well it goes. True, one family may not be impressed if you turn off the lights and computer's water refrigerator just to test your preparedness level, but you will learn a lot. Thanks. Enjoy listening to your programs, Elaine. And hopefully, I sent this to you, Elaine. Uh, sent you the guide. If I did not, for whatever reason, please email me back or leave a phone message and I will definitely... Um, get that out to you uh this one's from franz 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 van der Werf. wow it's a great name franz van der Werf. he's from uh, denmark shocker hi mark first of all great videos and i like the logic in which you bring the message great job it must have been quite some experience to bring it out originally trained as a maritime officer at first, I was skeptical. I came across the flat earth thing some years ago when checking the banking scandals across, which led me even to the old Babylon and even ancient civilizations. Think of the enormous megalithic stones around the world and whatever kind of conspiracies. Funny thing is that these conspiracies are not since they are in the open, whereas more and more the governments around the world have their agenda. I am a Dutchman living in Denmark and was wondering whether there are more people here that have things to share and want to undertake th certain things. I think that the flat earth is quite a valid model since I agree with your statement is right. No one even has shown a true picture of the globe. So many things are fake or fake that it feels uh, going beyond belief. These people groups or whatever we call them are extremely smart in whatever they undertake and have a patience. Uh, that also is beyond our my imagination. So thank you for being one of my own uh, my eye openers. Best regards, Fra Franz van der Werf from Denmark. And if anyone wants to contact him, his email address. If you're in uh, Denmark or anywhere out in, in that region, uh, his email is f is in Frank, v is in Victor, d is in dog, w at outlook.com, which I, it stands for Franz van der Werf. So awesome. So thank you. Thank you very much from Denmark. 
Uh, let's see here. What's this one? Ben. Ben writes, Hi, Mark. My name is Ben, and I've been following you since your interview on Coast to Coast and haven't missed a show. You have opened my eyes and helped steer my path towards truth in a major way. So I wanted to first thank you for your courage to put it all out there and help so many people come to the reality of our fishbowl and the level of deception that we face. It's madness. Okay, that aside, I wanted to give you my theory on why they keep building those radio telescopes all over the place. What do you think about it having something to do with Project Bluebeam? I think that those would be perfect projectors as well as viewers. Lenses work both ways, right? Hmm. Anyhow, I hope to hear your thoughts on the idea as I have yet to hear anyone else propose this theory. I will look to see if any of the Blue Beam sightings correlate to the location of any radio telescopes and get back to you. Till then, take care and treat others better than you treat yourself. Awesome. Uh, P.S. Can I get a copy of the Empty Shelves PDF, please? Uh, yes, you can, Ben. And now that I read this at the end, I will absolutely send that to you. And let's see. Ted writes. What's Ted write? Oh, he sent me a map of the circle of the Earth that I that um, it's kind of a variation. I've seen and I have seen this map before. Uh, you guys can look it out there. There's different flat Earth maps, but there's maps uh, with a flat Earth in the center with more consonants on the outside and a secondary ice ring. So though, thank you, thank you, Ted. Uh, Ted Toth for, for sending that to me and the other guy who was let me say his name real quick that was Jim thanks for taking my call and uh, there was so much I wanted to say but I was a bit nervous thanks for listening and thanks for presenting the world with this information enjoy the map looking forward to speaking with you again soon Jim and that's the flat earth with ice rings that's awesome Let's see Art writes Mark where do I get an uh R.I.P. Globe Mug from. I want one. And I'm sorry, his actual name is Abi Shai, A B I S H A I. Uh, I got to look that up. I, it, I'm sure they sell it because the, the mug was on top of some other flat earth, earth mugs. So just look up flat earth mug or flat earth R.I.P. Globe. And, uh, he's, met, he's mentioning the one I used on my thumbnail for the last Strange World episode uh, 83. And it's really cool. It was cool enough that I decided to, to turn it into a thumbnail. I, I thought it was very, very uh, clever. So uh, if I find it, I will let you know. But I, I get so many emails that I'd have to start digging through and figure out who sent it. I, in fact, the guy who sent me the picture may not even be the guy that did it. So it's got to be sold out there. So look it up. R.E.P. Globe Mug or R.I.P. Globe. You, know, you'll, you should be able to find it. Uh, getting close to the ends of these emails. What's this one? This one's from Alex. Hey, Mark, I'm not a flat earther. Oh, you don't want to start with that. But I am very interested, amused, fascinated by the whole topic uh, and movement as such. Not really sure why, but I do agree that one should question authority and do one's own thinking. That being said, I just read about the Antarctic Circumpolar Expedition taking place soon. Pfft, yeah, taking place soon. Let me know when that happens. And thought you would let you know in case you didn't, were not aware of it. Uh, I don't know what newly created Swiss Polar Institute to launch. Yeah, we'll see. Thank you for an entertaining and mind challenging show. Regards, Alex. Well, at least he didn't, wasn't mean. Uh, let's see. Daniel? Daniel writes Hi, Mark. In one of your videos, you briefly discussed music, where you mentioned why some songs, such as Hotel California, remain so popular over the years. You allude to the fact that this has nothing to do with catchy lyrics and the real reasons go much deeper. I realize this has nothing to do specifically with Flat Earth, but I was deeply fascinated. I wondered if you might make a video where you go into greater detail about specifically what you meant. Thanks, Daniel. Um, every once in a while, this will happen to me. Daniel, I have no idea what you're talking about. I, Hotel California, which is a great song from uh, the Eagles, Grammy-nominated album of the same name, if I'm not mistaken. The uh, I just, I don't have an opinion on Hotel California as far as the the, the deeper mystery behind it and and you know maybe some of the occult leanings. I, I don't. I I never mentioned it in an interview. As far as I know, if I had, I think I would remember it. I'd like to. My memory's pretty good, so I don't. It must have been somebody else in the flat Earth community. I mean, heck, some people write me and and literally will say, "Hey, Eric," and or "Hey, Matt." I've I've been called different people in the flat Earth community. It's it's Mark. So, but, uh, but thank you for, for writing and, um, hopefully you'll find your answer from somebody else. Uh, let's see here. This one's from 
Nope, not that one. This one's from Eric. Uh, Mark, I grew up in a Christian church environment. As an adult, I lost faith. I studied physics and astrophysics heavily, and I couldn't believe in a God with us having such a small, insignificant place in the universe. If there was a God, he surely didn't care about our individual, everyday lives. There is a small group of us at work that like to talk about politics, science, aliens, philosophy, religion, all the sensitive topics. One day, the idea of a flat earth came up, and we all laughed and couldn't believe it was a real movement still. I took it upon myself to be one of the ones to look into what these flat earthers were claiming. My idea was just to look at a few videos and bring back what I found the next day for some good laughs. The first video I watched was, they are hiding God with the greatest lie ever. I was glued to the screen. I liked how the clues weren't religion based. If they had been initially, I probably would have just turned it off. At the very end, some Bible verses were put out. One from Job really struck a chord. Uh, stand, I will question you and you will answer. Since you know so much, tell me how I created the heavens and the earth. Were you there? Paraphrased, of course. My eyes filled with tears. I didn't go to sleep that night. I kept digging and digging and digging for weeks. You uh, um, and Eric Dubay, some of his stuff, and Rob Skiba really, really nailed it all home for me. Rob brings in the Bible and makes it all make sense. I look at the world with new eyes. I've shared with my fiance, parents, and sisters. They were all very, very receptive, and my dad, who is a preacher, said he was already on board. It makes you view everything differently and seeing the lies and nonsense that's being forced down the masses' throats is easy to detect. It will change the way me and my fiance raise our family. All in all, I am writing you to thank you for settling me down I'm sorry, setting me down the path. I've been consumed with finding truth. Things I used to love, like aliens, I was so on board with the on Anunnaki train big time. Dinosaurs, space, taking a look at it all now, I can't even stomach it. I'm not sure how you feel about the God of the Bible, but I am sure that I was lost before seeing your videos. If you're in contact with Rob Skiba, please forward this to him as well. I'm following him very closely because of this tie-in with scripture. I want him to know he has helped me immensely. Oh, and Zen Garcia. Thanks a lot. Love you guys. Keep up the good work. P.S. I was also an Army field artillery officer, so I would be willing to help out with anything. I know you sometimes reference professionals who would need to know about the curvature or rotation to do their jobs. Regards, Eric Harden from Kansas City, Missouri. You know what? We're going to end on that one. A real positive, life-changing uh, email. And thank you, thank you for, for writing it. And thank you for everyone who wrote the emails. And I, I again, I read every one of them. And I, you know, if, if, if I can, I'll, I'll try to put it into an email show. If not, I'll put it on Strange Worlds. So until then, uh, stay flat. Mm -hmm.